In this video, I will show you how we can write a characterization test to ensure that when we refactor code, we don't uh, accidentally break things. And when we do accidentally break things, how we can get immediate feedback from our test runner. Writing a characterization test is a useful technique for refactoring code bases that do not have any existing unit tests. Before we can write a characterization test, we first need to determine the boundaries of refactoring, or Martin Fowler calls this the seams of refactoring. Let me show you what that means in practice. For me, in this code base, the boundary would start uh, here when the, with the loading of data. And second, we would include the transformation, all of the data pre-processing. And finally, it would include the model training. That is the job of this uh, code. Let's, let's set this as a boundary and we'll add an automated test for this. And let's make this boundary explicit by defining a function. And everything moves into this function. I've changed a little bit of code. So in absence of any unit tests, I will have to manually test that everything still works. So we have some problem now. The something outside the boundary is trying to access something inside the boundary. So to me, this uh, models part, it's not within the boundary because it's just like a visual feedback that we were trying to get without unit tests. Um, it was like this in the notebook. To know that this notebook works, we would have this uh, data frame with some numbers, right? So the numbers is what we care about to make sure that this whole thing works. So I will add this to the boundary of this function. Return all our A's. All of these things, we will need to return it from within this boundary. And now we're going to write a unit test to replace this visual inspection. To do this, we will need to write an automated test. That's what I will do right now. Okay, a new test. Um, this will be a functional test. So this is the test for that boundary, the automated test for that boundary. We, our function prepare data and train model should return the accuracy scores. And if this test passed, we would know that we haven't broken anything um, inside here. Let's invoke our function. So we know that um, once we get this, we will get a, a tuple of scores. So let's assert on that. Uh, the first and the second value. So the first value should be greater than the second. So the first value will be our score. We expect it to be greater than, let's say, 50. So let's run the test. Okay, it's complaining about this part of the code, which is outside the refactoring boundary. So I would comment it out for now. And the test passes. The main purpose of having this test is to make sure that there is a harness around what I'm changing so that when this function is invoked, all of this code is run, it doesn't blow up. In addition, should we change our code in a way that causes the model to degrade and cause the accuracy score to fall below our specified threshold, the test will fail and give us feedback to tell us that we've done something wrong. So for example, Let's say I was uh, refactoring this code and I accidentally made a mistake and removed, I forgot to remove something. The test would now fail and immediately give us feedback to say that we've done something wrong. Uh, please pause and uh, tread carefully. If this test wasn't here, what would have happened in a more typical scenario would be that uh, we made this mistake and then we got on, went on to change a bunch of other things and you know change something else. 
And by the time we kind of run everything and do that uh, kind of manual integration test, we would have then seen some error. And by the time our the actual error, this line of code is so deeply buried with, within all of our other changes that um, now we are stopped in our tracks and we have to debug and figure out where exactly that bug was. Now, if instead we had this unit test running uh, continuously as we refactored, we would have spotted the mistake uh, the moment it was introduced. And that's the value of this characterization test. So with this test harness in place, we can take it a step further to tweak this value to ensure that the ref um, our code didn't degrade and that the model accuracy didn't uh, get worse after our uh, refactoring. Essentially, we can replace what we used to do manually with our eyes with an automated test instead. In this example, we're training seven different models uh, with seven different accuracy scores. So we could copy and paste uh, each of these scores into our characterization test and use them for our assertions. During our refactoring, if we change our code in a way that causes the score to drop below what it currently is, then the characterization test will fail and give us immediate feedback to say that something's gone wrong. And right now we're using accuracy score, so whatever is the measure of goodness for your model, let's say it's recall or precision or RMSE, whatever that is, you can codify that in, uh, in this test. Right? Let's say our expectation is 90, and through our refactoring, we somehow changed some feature engineering and did something that caused uh, the model to degrade below our expectation, the test will immediately fail and tell us that you know, we've done something wrong. The only gotcha that I want to mention here is that um, unlike other unit tests which, are gen which generally are deterministic, for this given input, you always get the same output. Because we are training ma machine learning models, it's by definition non-deterministic. So the exact same code without changing anything might pass at one time, but it might fail at another time. And so we just have to apply some judgment here. You have to find a way to write this test in a way that uh, it's not flaky like this. And by flaky, I mean that it passes or fails without any changes in source code. So in this case, either we can set a lower threshold or we can also find out which is that model that is wildly fluctuating and remove it so that we can have a more deterministic test or at least a test that tends towards uh, being more deterministic. So 63.64 is the score, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 is the fifth score, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 is the stochastic gradient descent model. So let's remove it. <clears throat> and exclude it from our refactoring boundary so that um, we have a smoother experience uh, with this refactoring. A second thing to watch out for would be the um, speed of this test. Because it's end-to-end, -end, starting from loading data to feature transformations to training models, uh, it tends to run slowly. In this example that I have, we are training six different models. So you probably won't have this problem. I, this problem is you know, because of the problem I've chosen, because of the original notebook that I have. So uh, the general principle here is that your characterization test or your functional test should run fast. So in this case, if I was working on this, I would simplify this and you know, just train one or two models instead of all six different models um, so that my test would run faster. But yeah, you, for your example, you have to determine what is slowing down your code and determine whether it's essential for it to be part of the refactoring boundary. And if it's not, you can remove it to speed up the test. In my longer video where I demonstrate how I refactor a Jupyter Notebook, this characterization test helped me many times. When I changed some code in a way that broke existing behavior or introduced a bug, the test immediately failed within one or two seconds and told me that um, there's an error here, go uh, check it out, go fix it. So I cannot understate the value of uh, characterization tests, uh, especially when you're refactoring a code base that has no unit tests at all. So do give it a try, um, write one for your existing code base and you know, do a bit of refactoring and I hope you see the value of having this automated test before you refactor your code base and add even more unit tests.